Hi everybody, today I'm going to be reviewing the Black Satin Long Line Extreme Waist Clasp Corset made by Dracula Clothing. And Dracula Clothing is an off the rack corset company as well as they do ready to wear clothing and they're based out of Prague from the Czech Republic. And this corset was funded by my patrons on Patreon so thank you all so so much for making these reviews possible. So without further ado, here's the front, the side, the back, and the other side. So I had purchased this corset thinking that it would be uh, a bit of a different pattern compared to the Leonardo Inventions corset, which you might remember I reviewed a few weeks back. But when I received both corsets in the mail and I was able to compare them side by side, it's fair to say that they probably started from the same basic pattern and then it was just cut like very slightly differently. So you'll see when I go to the tabletop portion of this review that uh, pretty much like the first and second panels are different from the Leonardo corset but all the other panels seem to be nearly identical. Like the first panel tapers down towards the lower tummy a little bit more instead of being crescent shaped and uh, panel two takes any of the girth that was cut off of panel one. Um, as well, the front of this corset was lengthened uh, about an inch all around the hip and you can see in the center front here uh, it points down a little bit more. But apart from that, the pattern is very, very similar. So for the length and fit of this corset, the center front here is 14 inches. The princess seam here from under the bust to the top of the lap here is 11 inches. Six of those inches are from the waist up and five of those inches are from the waist down. The side seam here is 13 inches and in the center back, it's 14 inches once again. And for the circumferential measurements, today I'm wearing the size 22, so when I measured this right out of the box before being worn, it did measure 22 inches in the waist when laced closed, so it is true to size. The rib cage here is 28 and a half inches, so it has a 6 inch rib spring. The high hip here measured uh, about 32 inches, so it has about a 10 inch high hip spring, and the low hip measured 35 inches, so it has a 13 inch low hip spring. This corset is definitely tapered through the rib cage. It's quite conical. I can feel that it's pulling in my lower floating ribs. And around the hip here, it does come out a little bit more suddenly than I'm used to in some other off the wrap corsets uh, towards the iliac crest. And then it softens and kind of drops down a little bit towards the lower hip here. So I would not say that this has a high square hip shelf, but it does uh, have room for the pelvis so it doesn't squeeze the uh, iliac crest. So let's go to the tabletop portion of this review and I can show you the other details of this corset close up. Okay, so here is the Dracula Clothing Long Line Corset with Clasps uh, laid flat and it's been quite a few years since the last time I reviewed a video with these swing hooks here. So it seems to be two main layers. The fashion fabric is black satin and I don't feel very much of an interlining in here. So the lining doubles as the strength fabric and this is black cotton twill. So this is what the Dracula clothing label looks like and there's no um, fabric content or cleaning instructions, but this is the size label. So this has a six panel pattern, one, two, three makes the front, four, five, six makes the back. And like I mentioned, uh, the pattern is quite similar to the Leonardo Inventions corset that I had reviewed a, a little while back. Uh, the difference is mostly in the first two panels. So instead of the first panel um, coming in at the waist and then back out towards the hip in kind of this C shape, um, it actually just tapers down towards the lower tummy here. And so, um, it seems that they sort of stole from Peter to pay Paul kind of deal where any of the fabric that was cut away from panel one, they just added it to panel two. So you can see that uh, the top of panel two is still very crescent shaped, but then it just kind of widens at the bottom instead of going back out towards the, the hip here. And then um, panel three is still kind of bottle shaped, uh, just like with the Leonardo corset. So it's widest at the hip here and then it tapers up towards the ribs. Same with panel four, uh, widest at the hip, tapers up towards the ribs. And then panels five and six round at the back. There's a little bit of ease uh, to go over the bum, a little bit of ease for the back there to relieve um, some squish, but more or less they're standard panel shapes, uh, nothing really interesting going on there. And this corset was constructed using the welt seam method. So they put um, the fashion fabric and the lining of panel one together, uh, wrong sides together, and pretty much flat lined it. 
Uh, obviously, they um, left space for the front steel bone there to put the swing hooks in there. And then they assembled panel two with the fashion fabric and the lining of panel two sandwiching the seam allowance of panel one. Uh, in between them. So the seam allowances was, they were basically pressed towards the back. And then panel three, the fashion fabric and the lining sandwiches the um, seam allowances from panel two in between them. And all the seam allowances are pressed towards the back again and on and on until you get to the very back panel with panel six here. So the welt seam method tends to have one seam bulkier than the other seam. It shows a top stitch on both the fashion fabric and on the lining side here. And you can see that the bones are sandwiched in between the panels here. And turning to the inside, you can see that there is an exposed waist tape on the lining side here. It's one inch wide, made from black grosgrain ribbon, and it's a partial waist tape running from the seam between uh, panels one and two to the seam between panels five and six. You can also see that it's actually slanted slightly downwards towards the center front. And uh, some Victorian courses also did this. So as long as it's symmetric on both sides and it's comfortable for the wearer, this is not a wrong way of doing the waist tape. It's just a different way of doing it. And the binding on the top and bottom of this corset, it seems to be a matching satin. Um, so it's nice that they decided to match the, the color of the satin here and not go with like a, um, a commercial black satin binding that's like a different shade of black or anything. But it's machine stitch on both outside and the inside. On the outside you can see there is a tiny little top stitch. And on the underside here you can see the necessary seam allowance. Additionally, there are six girder tabs in this corset, three on each side. The modesty panel in this corset is five and a half inches wide, so it would cover a lacing gap of maybe about four inches. And it's finished in the same black satin on the outside and black cotton twill on the inside. It's unstiffened and it is uh, sewn onto one side of the corset here. If you don't like modesty panels, you can easily remove this using a seam ripper, but the labels might come off with it. Additionally, there is a modesty placket extending out from the front here. It's three quarters of an inch wide, unstiffened, and finished in the same black satin. So obviously this does not contain a busk per se, but it does have these four swing hooks or clasps here. So uh, the bones that are supporting the clasps, these are 12 inches long and they are a little bit, little bit more heavy duty. So they are a three quarter inch wide bone on either side. And I think they're finished in stainless steel. Uh, they're a little bit more rigid than uh, compared to a standard flexible busk and they had holes drilled into them so that uh, these clasps could be riveted in. So you can see how it works is um, this loop fits over that loop and then this swings down to lock it in place. Now, when you're doing this on your body, it takes a little bit of work and some of these are much easier to um, fasten than others. For instance, this second one, no problem whatsoever. It's even a little bit on the loose side. This one at the top I found is generally the most tricky. The interesting thing about these swing hooks, while I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it's easier to get out of a corset with swing hooks compared to a busk because they tend not to um, break the way that a busk does if you just open up these without loosening the laces first. However, I do tend to recommend, um, it's just a good habit to loosen the laces first whenever you take off your corset. You're going to have to loosen the laces the next time you wanna get into it in the first place. So um, it's just a good habit to keep. If there was only one thing that I was concerned about regarding these swing hooks it's that the waistline of this corset uh, does not have a swing hook like directly in line with the area of the most tension so over time there might be very slight bowing right here at the waistline or at least the fabric stressing uh, right there because there is no swing hook like right at the point where it has the most pressure or the, the most tension on the corset uh, holding that part in place. I have seen that sort of damage or wear on other types of corsets with swing hooks. Uh, not so much on this one or at least not yet um, but keep in mind that my waist is about 27 now so this corset gives me like a maximum five inch reduction. I usually wear it at a four inch reduction because it's so tapered in the ribs. And this corset has a total of 24 bones, 12 on each side, and it's double boned on the seams with quarter inch wide spiral steel bones. So you can see two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, and you can see that these all attract my magnet here. 
And on the center back here, sandwiching the grommets are two flat steel bones. And these attract my magnet, although weakly. So if you remember back to my Leonardo Dracula clothing review, um, the bones in the center back and the busk in the center front tend to uh, attract my magnet a little bit more weakly. It doesn't mean that it's not steel. It probably means that they're stainless steel. So because they contain less iron, they uh, tend to rust less. However, um, because it's less ferrous, it tends to uh, have a bit of a weaker attraction to my magnet in general. However, you can see that the, the clasps themselves, they very strongly attract my magnet. So it's nice to know that the clasps are real metal and they're not just kind of like a painted over plastic. And here's a close-up of the grommets. There are a total of 24 of them, 12 on each side. They are size double zero with a small to medium flange around them and finished in silver. And they are equidistantly spaced a little bit more than an inch apart. I would say probably uh, one and a quarter inches for most of these areas here. Uh, they all seem to be holding in pretty well. Um, you can see that, especially around the waistline, they are shifting ever so slightly towards the center back. Um, I am a little bit concerned about the thinness of the satin here and whether or not the satin would uh, show some wear over time with the grommets kind of biting into them. But if it's only the satin that does that and not the strength fabric underneath, then that would only be an aesthetic thing. As long as the grommets stay in, that's the most important part. And here's a close-up of the underside of the grommets, so nice big washers here. Um, most of these have rolled pretty nicely. There are a couple of splits on the back side, but it does not tend to catch on the laces because the laces are fairly abrasion resistant. And um, all of these seem to be holding in pretty well. I don't see uh, a lot of wear here. And the laces themselves are your standard workhorse lacing. So it's quarter inch wide, black flat, nylon shoelace style laces. They have a little bit of spring to them, but they're very difficult to break. They have a lot of friction through the grommets here, but they're fairly abrasion resistant. So although it's a little bit tricky to um, lace up this corset, if you were to let go of the, the laces while you're lacing up, it tends to sort of like stay in that position instead of sliding open because there is so much friction. It does mean that uh, you need a little bit more strength to lace up this corset, and it does mean that it takes a little bit of more work to get out of the corset as well. You can see that it's laced in this chevron fashion. Uh, the bunny ears, um, like I mentioned with the Leonardo Dracula clothing corset, the bunny ears are just kind of like way too high for me. My natural waist is closer to down here. Um, so if you look in the underside, you can see that the bunny ears were put here. The waist tape, which is where your waistline is supposed to go, are right here. And my natural waistline is way down here. So um, I can relace the bunny ears to be in line with the waist tape, which it would be ideal if that waist tape was in line with my natural waist. Or I can put the bunny ears down here and that would probably be the most comfortable for me. The only reason that I haven't done that yet with this corset is because I wanted to show you how this corset came in the mail so you know what to expect. The long line extreme waist clasp corset that you see here with this particular pattern appears to be available in all black uh, but several different fabrics. So you can get the black satin that you see here as well as black cotton and black PVC. It's available in closed waist sizes 18 inches up to 38 inches. And this particular style you see here finished in the black satin, it costs $66 US with free worldwide shipping. Dracula clothing tends to ship via DHL and they ship out of Prague from Czech Republic. And this concludes my review of the long line extreme waist clasp underbus corset made by Dracula clothing. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you did, please remember to click that like button down there as it helps support this channel. If you have any comments or questions about this particular corset or about any of the other Dracula clothing courses I'd reviewed in the past, feel free to leave your questions down below and I'd be happy to answer you. And if you own this corset or another corset by Dracula clothing, feel free to leave your comment down below and let us know what you think of it because I'm sure many of us would be curious to know your thoughts. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, this particular particular corset review was funded by my supporters on Patreon, so thank you to each and last one of you. My supporters on Patreon get exclusive perks, first dibs to any of my corset sales, uh, any parts of my corset collection that I sell off, as well as exclusive shop discounts. As well, all of my Patreon supporters, even if they donate $1 a month, they get to literally vote with their dollar and let me know which types of courses they want me to review in the future, or if it's not a corset review video, what kind of topics they want me to talk about in the future. 
So if you'd like to learn more about my Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description below as well as on the screen here. And once again, thank you all for watching to the end and I will see you all next week for another video.